Friends in Christ, what hopes do you bring to worship? We bring hope for health and wholeness. What afflictions do you bring to worship? Physical pain? From illness and injury. Emotional pain? From sad and scary life situations. Mental pain? From disease of many kinds. With all of these afflictions, it's a miracle any of us are able to worship. But what else would we do? We yearn to know God's powerful love and to know that wholeness is possible. In today's gospel, a person with an afflicting spirit interrupts Jesus. And Jesus sets the person free. And where does the miracle of this story and our stories begin? When we bring all of who we are, hopeful, afflicted, bold, into relationship with the divine. So come, let us enter worship with our whole selves. Hopeful, afflicted, and bold. invocation. We come come to you, you, O God, God, aware aware of your your trust in us as speakers speakers for you. Let Let the the truths we illustrate through our actions be worthy of this trust. Let the attitudes we portray through our relationships with others be honorable. Let the words of our mouths reflect oneness with you. Amen. scripture is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, 
or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who, pre who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by, so by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The Gospel is from Mark chapter 1. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching, with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of God. Where the sighs are deep 
deep and doubtful, and our aspirations grown. All is not in vain, beloved. Our travail is not unknown. Christ within us, Christ among us, Christ the first and Christ the last. Love incarnate, hold your children till the storm of life is past. Himself will draw us near, deep abiding rays of mercy cast their light on lonely fear. Cry no more, ye poor and weary, our redeeming Lord is here. Christ within us, Christ among us, Christ the first and Christ the last. Love incarnate, hold your children till the storm of life is They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority? He commands even the unclean spirits. And they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the re surrounding region of Galilee. And here's my take on it. I think I have a demon, and it's living in my tummy, because my mom said leave the cookies, but they looked so good and yummy, so the demon said to eat them, and I did. 
I think I have a demon and it's living in my hand. I didn't mean to push my brother. It was not my brain's command. It must have been the demon pushing me. I think I have a demon and it's living in my head because I would have told the truth, but I somehow lied instead. The demon must have said those things for me. I think I have a demon and it's living in my heart because I know I should forgive, but I want to live apart. The demon says it's the other person's fault. I know I have a demon and it's living inside me because I make some big mistakes and I can't get myself free from the bad things that I say and think and do. So Jesus, take the demon, call it out into the air, make it leave me to myself, use your power to make me pure, and then I will be, wait, what? You won't? Oh, oh, you did? Wait, what do you mean you taught the disciples and died on the cross so that I could learn to do it myself? But I need your help now with this pesky demon that makes me do things that I know you wouldn't like. Well, yes, I know you love me anyway, but I want to be good. Wait, what? You say it's about me trying to do the right thing and conquer my own demons? Uh, but demons are strong. Y yes, yes, I know there aren't any real demons living inside me, but I do these things sometimes that make people feel unhappy or I don't follow the rules or tell the whole truth. Or I just mess up my life sometimes. Well, Yes, I know that's part of being human, but there must be something wrong with me. There's not. Everyone has demons. Imaginary demons. Okay. Everyone struggles to do the right thing. Well, do you think you could help me with that? Oh, oh okay. I get it. I get it. You are helping me. You're walking with me and you're giving me strength. You're connecting me with other people who can help. You're showing me how to call out my own demons. Okay, I get it. I'll keep trying. But do you have any hints, you know, for these 21st century demons? Because they're tough. Uh-huh. Okay. Focus on helping others. Remember how important love is. Okay, thanks. I, I can work with that. But just so you know, it would have been easier if you just called out the demon and made it go poof. I wish you all a demon-free week. Let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day. Amen. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astounded at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. From the moment he strides in, to the Capernaum synagogue, it becomes clear that Jesus' kingdom project is incompatible with the local public authorities and the social order that they represent. A demon immediately demands that Jesus justify his attack upon the authority of the scribal establishment. Jesus vanquishes this challenge and commences his ministry. He brings wholeness and liberation to the poor and receives hospitality from the socially outcast with whom his solidarity lies. When thinking about how Jesus taught as one with authority, I remembered an old story about a gathering in which a noted actor was called upon to give an oration. He stood and he cleared his throat and he recited the 23rd Psalm with 
perfect dramatization, inflection, and so on. When he was finished, the room was filled with applause. Then an elderly priest stepped forward and he proceeded to recite the same words. When he was finished, there was not a sound in the room, but nearly every eye was filled with tears. And someone asked the actor what the difference had been. Well, you see, he said, there's no doubt that I know the 23rd Psalm backwards and forwards, but the father here, well, he knows the shepherd. The gospel today says that people were amazed because Jesus taught with authority and that he commanded even the unclean spirits. As with the priest in that story, Jesus spoke out of his being, out of who he was, out of where he came from. And people could sense that, and they were drawn to him. The people were amazed because Jesus had no formal training, no fancy degrees, and yet taught with genuine authority. They were impressed by how he taught and what he taught. They were awed, in fact, by his very person. Jesus lived the word of God. He applied it to his own life, even when it was difficult. He was fully focused on doing what God wanted of him and did it. When he spoke the truth, it was the truth of God. And this was communicated to others. But they were even more amazed, more impressed, when the man with the demon entered the synagogue and this demon recognized the authority of Jesus and cried out. And then Jesus, by one simple command, be quiet and come out, cast the demon out of the man. So are there demons in our world, our country, in our lives? Are there even such things as demons? Most of us are products of the 20th century scientific view. We believe there is an explanation for almost everything. And that empirical research is one of the best ways to study and understand the world. Yet, I believe in demons. I believe in demons because of the empirical evidence. Think about it. In ancient societies, it was believed that people were possessed by demons that took over their lives and made them a living hell. Today, people are possessed by desires and addictions that have the same result. Something else controls them and makes their lives unmanageable, unbearable, and unpleasant in the extreme. The evidence seems irrefutable to me. Forces of evil exist. Some of these forces of evil are social in nature, and some of them are personal. There are evil powers that can and often do take over people's lives. Not just the demons that modern psychology tells us about, fears, anxieties, and appetites that crouch in the dark places of people's hearts and minds and control them until the day the light is shown upon them. But also the spiritual powers that take over a person's soul when the door is left open to them. I've felt their presence, seen their presence. They are the demonic forces that we give into that cause racial violence, domestic abuse, or unfettered and unjust use of power. They are the tempters that entice people to throw their lives away in the pursuit of money and power. 
But the existence of demons is not what our gospel reading today is about. Whether those demons are forces of unwellness that we think we understand, or the more notorious forces that I have mentioned, the real issue in today's reading is the authority of Jesus. His authority in teaching and his authority over the demons, over the forces that bind and control people and make their lives unwell. But there's more. Jesus has the power and authority to banish evil from our lives. Imagine, if you will, the forces of evil gathered before us. There's violent crime, making people cower in fear behind bolted doors. Here is addiction, dragging her victims around in chains. And there is prejudice, enticing us to assume that we are better than another. There's domestic violence, abusing those closest to him. And here are racism, materialism, me-ism, and all the other demonic forces that invade our lives. Scary bunch, aren't they? They are too real to just ignore. Besides, escapism is waiting to pounce if we try. The simple truth is we can't defeat the evils or the demons around us and within us by ourselves. We don't have the strength or the ability to defeat them alone. The good news is there is a higher power that is fully able to help us. And that power was seen in Jesus. He came to destroy evil and evil knew it. Jesus had the authority and the power to literally tell evil where to go. The message for our lives is twofold. First, it means that we can be set free. Great love can banish from our lives those things that afflict us. For some, it is immediate. The bondage they experience is utterly and completely removed. For others, it is a one-day-at-a-time process. Until, lo and behold, when they look behind, they see that they are new creatures. That their lives are now filled with light rather than darkness. Secondly, it means we can play a part in casting out the evil that exists in the world around us. When we get with the program, when we walk in the way of Jesus, his authority becomes our authority. Jesus grants to us his authority as we walk with him day to day, as we, like the old priest in the 23rd Psalm story, enter into a relationship with the shepherd. He empowers us to speak and act as he himself spoke and acted. As we diminish, the divine increases in us. As we let go of our understanding, the divine truth grows in us. As we acknowledge our weakness, divine power is magnified in us. As we follow the way of great love, we too become able to expose and cast out the evil around us, becoming those who can bring healing and wholeness to this world. Amen.
Before we take a short time to commune with God, I would like to offer an announcement. I will be out of town next week for our service, but we will have a guest preacher, Mark Ullam himself, who will be presenting the service for next week's virtual worship. I would also like to lift up my eldest sister, Sherry, who was hospitalized last night with COVID-related pneumonia. Please surround her with your prayers for healing and for health. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, you give us the tools, the tools to fight and eventually banish evil in this world. And that tool is the authority of Jesus that you granted to him and will also grant to his followers. We ask today that you grant us that authority so that we might continue the good fight, the fight toward justice and peace for all. We live in hard times, and it is so easy to be tempted to succumb to those demonic powers of unfettered power against others. So give us the strength and give us the spirit to continue to rebuke these powers of evil in our world. Great love, hear us now as we lift to you our personal and private prayers for ourselves and for others. We lift these prayers to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Now may the power and the passion of God go with you and give you authority to banish the evil of this world. Amen.